Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Anna, I'm the Director of Public Health. Uh, really good to see so many people on the call and welcome today and, and thanks for coming. Um, people keep asking me what my strategy is to get um, the, the vaccination messages out to local people and I keep looking, keep saying you. Um, so our champions basically um, and our other system leaders, so um, our imams, our um, you know, church leaders um, are, are absolutely vital to getting that out there. So we're really, really lucky today because um, we've got Dr. Colin Spears, who has done a lot of good work in Wakefield around all sorts of things, diabetes being a, a specialist area of his. And he's also the um, clinical lead for the COVID, COVID vaccination programme. He's come to talk to us today, which is really kind, Colin, because I know how incredibly busy GPs are in primary care are. So we really, really appreciate it. Um, and I'll just let you say hello. Uh, hi everybody, so I'm not in a prison cell, the bars behind <laughs> windows, I'm currently in Castleford at one of our vaccination sites. Um, brilliant, so you're kind of, that's quite, you're, you're at a vaccination site, that makes it even more exciting. Um, and then I just want to introduce Jo Fitzpatrick, who's our lead officer um, for the vaccination programme, so she's our senior responsible officer across the Wakefield patch. Um, and, is, and that's a, a fairly sort of, as you can imagine, an incredibly busy role. And again, we're incredibly grateful that Joe's taken time out today to come and talk to all of us. Um, so Joe, do you want to say hello? Thanks, Anna. Uh, so yeah, hi, I'm Joe Fitzpatrick. Some of you might uh, have met me. I am a pharmacist by background um, and uh, I've been working in Wakefield for 19 years and I am a, a, a well, I'm a Featherstone girl. I, I live in Wakefield as well. So um, hopefully know our population really well. And I'm responsible for um, ensuring that all of the eligible population in Wakefield uh, can have access to the vaccine when it's their turn um, and making sure that we've got all our sites operational and running well and safely. Thanks, Jo. Um, and then we've got Emma Smith, um, who works in my team, who's the Head of Health Protection. Emma, do you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. I'm sure some people have heard from me previously. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and then we've got Kerry, who, who's already introduced herself um, and, and is also sort of a key, a key member of the team. So that's, I think that's for all of us. So I think we're moving over to Jo now. If you could just do a bit of an introduction to the vaccination programme, Jo, for us. Thanks, Kerry. Yeah. So uh, the vaccination programme started, as you, as you will all be aware, because it is so much in the media, it's, uh, it's probably... Uh, one of the number one topics at the moment um, out there on social media and the general media as well. So the, the vaccine rollout is starting. It's actually started, uh, we will say, and I, I'm going to give an update on where we are uh, in Wakefield with it. But um, we have uh, started with the vaccination programme in December. Uh, that's when the Pfizer vaccine that you will have all heard about got its uh, marketing authorization. And then on the 31st of December, that followed very quickly with the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine gaining its authorization as well. So um, we are fortunate in this country that we've got two vaccines to choose from to vaccinate our population. And if we just go to the next slide, please. So how uh, the vaccination program works, it's a national vaccination program with um, a central um, center, a uh, control center that decides, um, a, an expert panel of people that decides how um, the vaccine will be rolled out um, and also on how much vaccine supply goes to each area of the country. So in terms of the priority cohort groups, the Joint Committee of Vaccination and Immunization, the JCVI, that's what that stands for, they're an expert panel of people who, who look after vaccines and immunizations for a, a range of diseases, not just COVID. Um, and so they're real experts on this. And what they've done, they've looked at evidence, they've looked at the vaccine, the, the properties of the vaccine, they've looked at the evidence of, of COVID and which parts of the population suffer worse from COVID when they get it. And, um, and they've used that to decide on how we roll out that vaccination program because we can't just make it available to everybody straight away um, through um, supply and also through capacity to be able to vaccinate everyone. So um, the, the, the order of priority is number one residents in a care home for older adults and their carers. So I, if I just uh, give a, a number there, so if you're a resident in a care home, um, you, you only need to vaccinate 20 residents in a care home to prevent one death from COVID. 
So that is the reason why care homes, and that's compared to um, 150 people over the age of 80 who live in their own homes. So that is the reason why, and we know um, that care homes have been particularly badly hit by uh, the COVID virus uh, in terms of worse outcomes and deaths. So very important that care homes for older adults and their carers were, were in that first vaccination cohort. Then um, it's all those over age of 80 and frontline health and social care workers, because they're the ones that are having contact with the public and also with vulnerable people. Um, and also a workforce that, that needs to keep going really and then not having to, to uh, self-isolate due to having COVID. And then um, it moves further down in terms of age range, which is all those over 75. And then to those over 70 and in with that is added clinically extremely vulnerable individuals. So that's the ones that have been asked to shield uh, during the COVID pandemic. And then further after that, we move down to over 65s uh, alongside those that um, are deemed high risk. And there's some categories uh, that, that talk about that. And then we're going to over 60s, over 50s, over 50s. And the eventual aim is to vaccinate everybody over the age of 18. Um, but it is estimated that the groups above on this slide, over 50, are the ones that represent about 99% of uh, deaths from COVID uh, or preventable deaths if we vaccinated people. So if we can get everybody over the age of 50 done, we've, we've uh, really um, made a big inroad into uh, fighting against this pandemic. So in terms of where we are at the moment, um, this in a care home for older, older adults and carers uh, in Wakefield, we anticipate uh, and the target that we've been set is to have everybody, uh, every care home visited and the residents vaccinated by the end of uh, Sunday, the 24th of January. So that's the, the date and we anticipate that that will have happened in Wakefield and it's the primary care networks, which I'll come on to in a moment, that are delivering that. Um, in terms of all those aged over 80 and frontline health and social care workers, the target was the end of January and we are on track for that uh, with a few caveats for exclusions such as the housebound, but we are catching up rapidly with that and the reason why we're a little bit behind with the housebound is because um, the, of the vaccine, uh, we were only given permission to move the AstraZeneca vaccine out to housebound patients last week. So that's why we're catching up um, with those that people that can't, uh, that aren't mobile and able to get to, uh, to a vaccination centre. And then the target, the next target is by mid-February that we'd have all our over 70s and clinically extremely vulnerable individuals vaccinated as well. And we are on track with that and uh, should receive the vaccine supply to do that. And then we're putting in plans after that for, for the other cohorts. So if we just it's me. So I think this slide is just about demonstrating that we have a long standing history of vaccination campaigns uh, within the UK and, and vaccinations go through rigorous processes all the times in terms of safety checks. And that's both at the trial phase and sort of the manufacturing phase as well. Um, and every vaccination batch that's produced, it always is tested before it goes into sort of the population domain and public. And I'd li I, I like my Bake Off, so I'd, I'd liken it to sort of baking buns in terms of vaccine production. So we have our tried and tested recipes. We follow those recipes. We check our ingredients before we start making the, our vaccine. Uh, we check our oven temperature in terms of safety checks. And these checks happen for vaccination in, in, the, in the pathway. And then we get our buns, our 12 buns at the end of the day, and, and that's liking it to our batch of vaccine. And with, with buns, we can't attempt, we can't resist that urge to just eat one. So we always will check that um, one bun batch before we um, share it with our friends and families. And a similar process happens with, with vaccine. We always check the batches that are produced before it is then delivered into the public um, domain. So vaccine is uh, really got rigorous uh, safety um, mechanisms around it. And this side just says as well that we've a long standing history 90, in the 1700s when we introduced the smallpox um, vaccination. And then uh, prior to the COVID vaccine, we had the HPV vaccination. So we do have a trusted history of delivering vaccination programmes and the benefits that brings for us. 
Uh, next slide, please. So I, I've briefly touched on, on this aspect already. So next slide, please. And I'll hand over to Colin, who's going to talk about how the vaccines themselves work. Hi, everyone. So I think it's important to think about uh, with, with vaccines is that the stage we're at now is usually built upon decades of research before. And there have been questions as to how the vaccines have been able to be released so quickly. It's because of that previous work. So the, um, the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca vaccine is actually based on work that was done on an Ebola vaccine.